So I'm married to Miriam Scoble, who's uh, Iranian. Uh, she came here when she was 14, and her, her relatives are still in Iran, and we've talked to them on the phone and on the internet. But, you know, we, we often have to stay away from political uh, points of view and stuff like that on the phone, because we don't want to get them in trouble. I have friends who, who are in jail around the world in China and, and Iran because of what they wrote on the internet or said on the phone or something like that. They have different rules overseas than they do here about freedom of speech. Well, Silent Circle has a way for us to communicate with, with a, in a secure way and keeping that stuff out of the government's eyes or other people's eyes. We're going to talk to Phil Zimmerman. He's one of the leading, he is the leading expert on encryption in the world. And uh, this is going to be a really interesting one about privacy and how to keep people out of your stuff. Who are you? I'm Phil Zimmerman. Um, I, uh, I do crypto for a living um, and I'm, uh, uh, started a company recently with a couple of friends to do uh, crypto for uh, uh, individuals to communicate. It's called Silent Circle. Uh, and um, I'm hoping to change the world some. Well, you already have. You're one of the few people who actually has changed the world. You've done uh, privacy and crypto for a long time, and you're really an industry leader. So That's it's, right. It's I, I created PGP, and I, I, but I want to do more stuff. I'm, I like. I want to do secure phone calls and secure other things. So yeah. that's what I'm doing now. Well, this, this seems like PGP for normal people, because you know it, when yeah. I was uh, had a PGP account, it, it was a little geeky. I had to send people a little code. It so was geeky, they, yeah. And, and somebody published a paper called "Why Johnny Can't Encrypt," and it was kind of like you have to understand too much crypto stuff to use it effectively. I'm hoping to reduce that now. Um, we, for example, with our secure phone calls, um, you just get on and make a call, and it goes secure, and you don't have to think about it. Yeah, it's it's really nice, and we'll get the apps uh, talked about here because you do uh, phone, text, email, and what else? I, I thought there was a fourth one. Well, we do voice and video. Voice, yeah, and video too. Yeah. So if I'm uh, working at CNN or something like that, and I want to have somebody, somebody, let's say in Syria, call in and protect their uh, privacy and protect their identity, they can use this tool to get video out. Well, <clears throat> I guess if you want to protect your identity, you wouldn't want the camera aimed at your face. Right. <laughs> if it's going to be on CNN, the Syrian government might be watching CNN. Yeah. But yeah, journalists can use it in war zones. Um, uh, where the original purpose of this was to to be used in conflict zones. Uh, the original purpose of PGP uh, 21 years ago was to use it in places around the world where people were trying to kill each other. Uh, later it became a business tool. But my original uh, interest um, in crypto was to to enable people that live under uh, oppressive governments or in a war zone or something like that to communicate securely, yep. protect human rights. PGP was originally a human rights project. I, I know a blogger uh, who's in jail in Iran right now, and I, I've been to blogging conferences in China, and some of those people are in jail right now because of what they write on the internet. Yeah. Now, this doesn't help because those guys were explicitly trying to change the world and trying to put their ideas yeah. in the public sphere. Um, but this does keep uh, people who are passing along information and don't want to be public um, safe. How, yes. How do I know that this is really safe? How do I know that if I send you a message in, in a silent circle that, you know, a well, government entity or <coughs> another company or somebody else can't can't? It, well, it's, it's as safe as PGP. Um, governments around the world use PGP. We hope governments around the world will use this too for the same reason that they've looked at it and they will trust it. Uh, if they can use it, if they feel safe with it, then individuals should also feel safe with it. Um, we publish our source code. Um, we um, stand behind our products. We, you know, we, we publish our protocols in, in documents. We publish the source code. Um, you have to also go by reputation. Uh, PGP has a good reputation. I don't want to talk too much about PGP. That's no. kind of, we're kind of past that now. 
Yeah. Um, PGP had its 20 years and now it's time for something new. Give us just a couple minutes on encryption because there's so many people out there who don't understand how the internet works, how packets <coughs> of information get from my phone to your phone. You, uh, the information gets scrambled. It, keys are agreed to by public key algorithms and then the traffic is encrypted. And if you don't have any technology background, then you just pretty much have to go by reputation. Okay. Uh, if you do have a technology background, then you can download our source code and inspect it yourself and see that it's doing what we say it does. Okay. Uh, if you're a software engineer, you could do that. If you're a cryptographer, you could do that. Okay. If you're not, then you can sleep soundly at night knowing that other people can. Very cool. Um, what I like about this new set of apps from Silent Circle is it's not so geeky to set up and make sure that the other side has the keys and can look yeah. at the information I'm passing to them. This, this is a set of iOS apps, right? Yes, and uh, iOS and Android, and we're gonna run on a lot of platforms. Okay. But um, we learned a lot of things along the way with PGP about how hard it is to explain things like trust models and key management to, um, to people, and we're trying to avoid that now. We're trying to use protocols that do these things kind of behind the scenes, and um, I like to think of it as curated crypto. Uh, we take care of it uh, from cradle to grave, you know, from one end to the other. We, we built our own servers, we built our own apps, we developed our, our own protocols, we have experience in developing crypto protocols. Um, and so we take care of everything. And that's what I mean by curated crypto. Um, people need help. You can't, if you just do an, uh, an app and, and give it to people and say, well, here's a crypto app, have a good time, you know, yeah. people can still make mistakes. Yeah. If we take care of everything, if we do everything along the way, then it's less likely to people are less likely to make mistakes. If you're somebody in uh, Syria or Iran and not, I'm passing information to you, part of it is uh, making sure that that information doesn't stay on the phone so that if you get arrested or sure. uh, c detained and they start looking through your phone, they won't find anything. How do you protect it yeah. in that scenario? Uh, we're working on features uh, that we have, in fact, even now have features that um, messages will self-destruct. And, it, and it, we can select a time saying, I send you a message and I want it to self-destruct after, five minutes after you read it, it will do that. Um, uh, we're trying to do a lot of things that make it so that if your phone is seized, uh, uh, it's not gonna be very visible to, I mean, they're not gonna be able to, um, the, the Iranian secret police will, they might throw you in jail because uh, of other reasons, but yeah. they're, they're not gonna get much out of that. You know, um, we, we're talking a lot about uh, using this to, uh, against governments like the Iranian government. Yeah. But I'd like to point out that this is not just for uh, people who work in war zones. Uh, it's also for just ordinary business travelers. Yeah. You know, if you're a business guy and you go to China to have some talks in, in ch with some Chinese factories or something that are gonna make something for you, and you want to talk to your corporate headquarters in the U.S., it's probably a good idea for you to encrypt the call. Yeah. And, and that's where we do especially well. Um, in a globalized economy, there's a lot of business, international business, where you have people that go to you know, the Middle East or China or someplace Eastern Europe, uh, maybe where there's cheap labor markets and, and you're gonna set up some business there. Uh, there's lots of need for international communications and the very same places that you're going to set up those businesses are places that have a lot of wiretapping going on. Yeah. So uh, organized crime in Eastern Europe will wiretap your calls. Um, you wanna protect yourself, not just from governments, but from organized crime. Yeah. Uh, if you live in Brazil, uh, you know, uh, organized crime in Brazil can you know, pay somebody at the phone company to provide them with wiretaps. Uh, it happens a lot. Um, protecting yourself against the criminal elements is probably something that is more important for a lot of people than protecting yourself from your government. No, it's texting. It, 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 I, I can send you a text and I can say, hey, delete that message after three minutes or something like that. And that way, three minutes later, that, that message is gone, right? Yeah. It's not going to stop you from taking a screenshot, but it's 
it's, it's a good way for you to help your friends stay out of trouble. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of divorces that have happened because of text messages. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's, um, you know, people send naughty pictures to each other. Um, we make it so that those, those things disappear and keep more people out of trouble. No, it's, it's true. We're helping marriages stay together. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other, so you can do a video on it. Uh, you can do like a, t a phone call on it, right? Yeah. Uh, explain, take me through the apps and what they actually well, do. Well, <clears throat> let's say phone calls. We, if, if you and the, your friend both have our service, then you could be secure end to end. The entire path of the, of the phone call is, is encrypted. Uh, nobody else has the keys to this, not even Silent Circle. Yeah. Um, and so um, it, you're, you're end to end secure. Does the contact list, is the contact list encrypted as well? So well, we use, somebody rips off my phone? We, we use the address book that's already on okay. your mobile device, so that's not encrypted, that's already there. Yeah. Uh, let's say you're, you're traveling in, uh, in China or Saudi Arabia or someplace like that, and you want to call home in the US, and um, your, your mom or your wife doesn't have uh, the silent circle service, then you're going to make an encrypted call from your mobile device to the Silent Circle servers in okay. the U.S. Actually, we put them in Canada. And then from there, you're using the no normal public switch telephone network to call your mom. Got it. And so it's not encrypted on that leg of the call, but you don't care because where you are in China, you're far more concerned about the wiretap threat locally to where you're standing. Yeah. Uh, you're not so concerned that the FBI is going to wiretap between our server and your mom. Yeah. So um, unless they're keyed in on you already, and then you have deeper yeah, problems. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's you know a specific threat model for that. But for a lot of people that travel internationally, they're more concerned about where where they're standing. Yeah. I'm so half a leg. I mean, one leg that's encrypted and the other leg not is actually re very useful for international travelers. Yeah. But if you have a need to be end to end secure then just have both ends be, uh, have subscriptions to our service and you're good to go. How, how, how are you guys making money with this? What, tell me about the business that you're building. We have a uh, subscription business model. We're not Facebook. We want people to pay us and our loyalty is with our paying customer. We're not gonna sell them to advertisers. Our customers are customers. They're not part of the inventory. With Facebook or with other social media, uh, you get it for free, but they sell you to advertisers. And yep. so you're not their customer, you're, you're part of their inventory. They yep. sell you to their advertisers. Right. We don't do that. We, we have an absolutely opposite uh, business model. You pay us, thank you very much, we, we, we just want your money, uh, and for that we give you our loyalty. And it's, what's the fee for uh, these four apps? We have two or three different uh, pricing models, but for the basic uh, thing for calling VoIP to VoIP, and, and the other services we have, it's twenty dollars a month. You okay. pay once a year. Uh, if you want to have the uh, calling plan where you want to call the to the public switch telephone network, we charge a little more for that uh, because we have to pay the phone company for the minutes. Um, and um, later on, we're going to have it making international calls, but I don't think that's a good idea to because international calls are often wiretapped in the foreign country. Yeah. So it's better, it, we'll offer that at some point, but we're going to encourage people who are working in environments that have a lot of wiretapping to, um, to get end-to-end -end secure connections by having both ends be subscriptions. Yeah, it's very cool. Anything yeah. else I need to know about the company or the system you're building? Well, the company is uh, its kind of an interesting partnership. Uh, Mike Janke is, is my uh, main partner here. And uh, we also have John Callis, uh, who was uh, CTO of PGP and also worked at Apple. He worked on full disk encryption at Apple. Yep. Uh, he was CTO at Entrust. Uh, and now uh, John is with us uh, as our CTO. Uh, Mike Janke is a former Navy SEAL. Uh, we have, a, we have um, another Navy SEAL in our team. And we have a couple of uh, British SAS um, officers on our team. They're helping us sell to governments. Uh, yeah. We would like to, just like PGP was used by every government around the world, we want our stuff to be used by governments. 
it's a good way to build public confidence in the in the product because governments won't use it if if they don't trust it. Yeah. So we hope the same thing will happen here. Comparing the video feature, is there a degradation of quality based uh, no, comparing to like FaceTime or in, Skype or something in, like that? Encryption is is um, doesn't change the the voice quality or the video quality. Um, it, it's it's just secure. You know, you get the same. It's you know, you just encrypt bits and decrypt bits. Yeah. Uh, as far as quality is concerned, um, it kind of depends on your network conditions. If you want to have good, smooth voice and video, then you want to make sure you have enough bandwidth for it. If you're on 3G, uh, we can do video on 3G. Uh, we've even done video on Edge, which is a very low bit rate. The yep. frame rate is lower, yep. so it's not as good as it would be on um, you know, 4G, for example. But um, we can even do video on Edge. Very cool. Uh, where do I learn more about these, about the Silent Circle? Go to our website, silentcircle.com. Very cool. And are you on Twitter and Facebook as well, the company? Or? We are. I don't personally use Twitter or Facebook, but yep. <laughs> I understand that we have a, a Twitter and Facebook account. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming in sure. and showing it to me, and thanks for what you do for the world. Okay. Thank you. Bye.